Hello guys, Tom Quarry here. Hope everyone's doing really well out there in internet land as ever. Today I'm going to be doing a video uh, utilising the ActiveX 3. I've been messing around with this loads recently and messing around with some of the lesser known AMP models, particularly to me. Um, there's loads and loads of AMP models on there that I really have never messed with. I've primarily been a Deluxe Reverb and a Friedman guy. I've messed with some of the Marshalls like the Plexis. But this particular amp that I'm going to be showing you today um, is really, really cool and I've never seen it before. Um, well, not never seen it, but never utilized it before. Now, the preset that I've created here is going to be available on my website for free. So you guys can get on there and download it. It uses only the stock cabs uh, that come with the AxeFX3. Unfortunately, it's not AxeFX2 or AX8 compatible. Maybe I'll be able to figure out how to do that uh, or reverse engineer the patch somehow for the AX8 users. Um, I don't actually have an AxeFX2 anymore, I'm just on the AxeFX3. Now, the reason I'm looking over here is because I've got um, AxeEdit 3, as you can see, just here. Using my iPhone as a cheeky kind of mouse trackpad, which is quite cool. Now, the other thing with this preset is it does include some really cool um, kind of techniques that you can utilize to make full range flat response or, um, you know, kind of model tones through uh, studio monitors like I've got here. I've got a pair of Focal Alpha 80s here. Um, a little bit more realistic sounding. So I'm going to show you some techniques you can use as well. But the amp we're using, you've probably seen this already in um, AxeEdit here, is the Custom Audio Electronics CA3 Plus, which was a three-channel preamp that was ostensibly made by John Sir. Now you heard it in the intro, and the major thing that blew my mind with this was how touch sensitive it is. Now this preamp was designed and developed in the heyday of kind of the studio guitarist era. So guys like uh, Steve Lukather, Dan Huff, I think Eddie Van Halen used this preamp for a little bit as well. So it's totally tone central. But the other thing I found was it's very, very bass heavy. So there's some things I've had to do to kind of complement that as well or to kind of mitigate for that. Now I've got, if we go over to AX Edit here. So we'll start with the rhythm channel. So scene one here, we've got our input, there's our compression block. We've got phaser, which I'm not gonna use, but you guys can just to give you the option. Uh, drive pedal, which is a TS-808, kind of Tube Screamer, modded Tube Screamer in this case. Here's the amp block. We'll go through all of these extensively. We've got the Custom Audio 3 Plus Rhythm um, amp on there. Our cab is a 1x12 Deluxe Reverb. Now, for you guys who want to, I've also included a Marshall 4x12 if you want to use a 4x12. But I really love the way this 1x12 Deluxe Reverb cab sounds, and I use it for a lot of stuff. We've got a chorus block. We've got a delay, which is a stereo tape delay. So this is a stereo preset. So for you guys who want to record or run in mono, you're going to have to choose uh, some mono uh, delay and reverb uh, when you uh, kind of use this preset, if you like. We've got the Plex reverb on there as well. This is not a Plex delay, it is a Plex reverb. They're kind of the same thing, it's just a smeared reverb. A looper in there, which is in there because in the intro, you heard me playing with the looper and then soloing over the top. So I looped a clean patch using the Plex verb and then soloed over the top. So there's our looper in there. And then we've got the most important block for me other than the amp and the cab, which is this reverb block, which we'll go through, and then the output block. So I'll let you hear all of the scenes. So here is scene one, and check out how touch sensitive this is. It's completely nuts how much dynamic range you've got. <laughs> So gorgeous, absolutely fantastic. Uh, scene two, now I've got these all mapped to my FC12 down here as well, but we'll do it using the mouse. Scene two is with compression on, I'll just show these really brief. Now the reason I'm using this is because actually for the lower gain kind of sounds where I'm rolling the volume back. It's very useful for the legato stuff. Helps to keep some consistency there, but for the higher kind of like where the volume is rolled up, I'm not really using that compression block at all. Scene three is with the drive pedal engaged. <laughs> Q 
kill its own, and then scene four is the same thing without the drive block, but now with the plex delay or plex reverb engaged. So you can do stuff like this if you roll the volume down. Totally insane. And then we're onto our cleans. So in this case, I'm actually using the clean channel of this particular preamp. So if I go to my amp block, I'm using the CA3 plus clean. Sorry, my mouse is a bit funny with this uh, iPhone trackpad. Now this, if I go to the neck pickup, I can move between a single coil kind of really nice Fender-esque kind of clean tone. But if I can uh, if I combine these two pickups with this uh, TQM1 guitar, I can get a really nice jazz tone. But again, it's very pick sensitive and very dynamic. I always think that the sign of a good clean tone is when the bridge pickup sounds good as well with that particular clean tone. And then if we go to scene six, we've then got uh, the drive pedal engaged, which in this case is the non-modded Tube Screamer, because I actually wanted to remove some of the low ends. And again, super dynamic. Absolutely killer. And then a big stereo analog chorus. So we've got this now. Kind of Mike Stern territory. And then finally, we've got the plex verb with the clean channel. And again, it gives you these massive, you can do chordal swells, although I don't have a volume pedal plugged in. That is nuts. So what I want to do is break down fairly quickly how this patch has been put together and some of the things that are going on. I'm just going to let my dog out of this room because she's desperate to go. Go on then. Bye bye. Uh, so let's go across to scene one. Let's break down some of the techniques that I'm using here to get these kind of tones. So again, this is what we're after here. <laughs> much fun to play. So the first thing, if we look at the amp block here, now this amp has a lot of gain on it. So first thing I've done is set the input drive lower than halfway. And this is on the rhythm channel, remember, we're not even using the lead channel. The, the lead channel is a little bit too bass heavy. So I just avoided that completely and started with the input drive just under halfway. That enables me, with the master volume set fairly high, to get to the point where I've got all of these pick dynamics. Now what I did with the master volume is I basically set it to the point where it got as loud as it would go before it started compressing. So it's basically until we stopped getting extra volume. Uh, so I can kind of demonstrate that for you. You can hear there we actually lose volume. Sorry, this is a little tricky with this uh, trackpad setup. I'm going to push it until we stop getting extra volume. So. So around there, it stopped getting louder. And that means we're not compressing too hard, but we're getting the saturation from the power tubes, but also that kind of touch sensitivity. Mm -hmm. 
One of the things I find with the Axe FX is to get the most authentic tones, you want to really play with that master volume, just like you would a real amp. But of course, you don't run into the issues of kind of having too much volume. Um, as far as the EQ controls go, this is a super bass heavy amp. So I've rolled the bass almost all the way out. If I roll that back in again, things get a little bit too flubby. <laughs> And I think there was a little bit of clipping going on there as well. So I'm going to roll that back down uh, to around one in this case, which is again very tricky to do with this mouse setup. Um, there we go. You can hear there's still loads of bass in there. The mids and treble are set to taste and the bright switch in this case is off. Now when I originally made this preset I put the bright switch on and it's a little... The cool thing about that is, I mean, I don't like, it's a little bit too brittle for me, but you guys could switch that on very easily and assign that to a foot switch on your FC6 or FT12 if you wanted to. I like how dark that sounds. Now, some other things that I've done here, if we go to the preamp, now I've been messing around with this a lot. Now, someone like Leon Todd, for instance, or Matt Picone from Fractal Audio would be able to tell you what this function does specifically, but I've just rolled off the high cut frequency for the uh, the preamp here all the way down to 6K. And that just seems to remove some of the slight fizziness and um, kind of FRFR-ness, if you like, that kind of hard to dial out sound that you get in that high end uh, from modeling because they, they're full range basically. And I've kind of mirrored that effect in the cab block as well. So if we go to the cab block here, I'm using this 1x12 Deluxe Verb, and again, there's a Marshall cab here for anyone who wants to kind of mess with that. I've just muted it for now. I'm just using the right input, so we're just using cab two, and everything's obviously panned to the center. If you look at my high and low cuts, I've rolled out everything below 60, basically 60 hertz, and everything above 66, 8, 8, or six, uh, you know, around six and a half K, basically. And if I roll this back in again, um, again, tr tricky to do like this, Okay, here's my... Listen to the high-end sizzle. Now, if I was to roll in on my preamp um, high cut as well, all the way up to, it goes up to 40 uh, kilohertz, actually. And if I was to roll in that 20K setting, it would be way too much high-end. I really like how realistic this sounds when I pull this out down to about 6K, 6.5K which is fairly extreme actually, most people wouldn't go this far. Especially in the high end. And the sustain is amazing. Very realistic, and I've rolled out this um, 60 hertz just to stop the very low end rumble. However, if you were gonna use this preset live with an FRFR setup, I would recommend that you go into the global EQ and roll out even more of that low end because this preamp is so bass heavy that it can get quite thumpy and thuddy in that low end. It's not muddy per se, but it can really give a kick that you probably don't want through a full range PA system or FRFR setup. Um, so the other things I've done here, if we go to cab more, I've kicked up the proximity and smoothing here. And what these two do, the proximity adds in some of that low end punch, which is a lot more like listening through a closed back one by 12 or even up to a four by 12 cab. It's giving me more low end, but in a very realistic, pleasing way. If I roll that out, that's a little anemic in the low end for me. So as I bring this in, and what was I set to here? About three, maybe a little bit higher. That again is offering me more kind of um, realistic low end punch from the cab, which is what you get in the room if you're playing nice and loud. The smoothing basically takes some of the phasing away that you might find with some IRs. Um, now there isn't any particular kind of phasing issue with the 1x12 Deluxe Fur, but this is a four, uh, 4047, I think it's an AKG mic that they've got on here. Now, if I roll this out, you'll hear. It doesn't make the biggest difference in the world, but I like what it does to the sound and the feel. So if we roll this back up again. 
Again, to me, it just sounds like it's taming some of that high end, which is very cool indeed. And then finally, in the room and air setting, this is one of the most important settings in the cab block for me. I've brought in a lot of room level, almost 50% room level, with the standard kind of default room size for the whole reverb here, or the whole room. Now, if I roll this out, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to disengage this reverb here because there's a double kind of whammy going on here um, because I'm using the reverb block here to do sort of the same thing. If I go back to the cab, Okay, let's dial this room level out. So let's just do that. Now listen. Still sounds great because the cab is great, but if we roll the room sound up again to about 49, 48, 49%. There's now basically just a small room sound sitting behind our initial attack that gives you much more of a realistic kind of feel, like in the room kind of feel. And I love the way this responds when you actually play. It's a lot more like playing through a real amplifier. Now what I've done is I've, I want a more extreme version of that. So I've combined this reverb block over here, taken the studio reverb, and by utilizing the studio reverb with a super short delay, uh, sorry, well, not delay, but reverb time of 0.45 seconds, and again, a high mix, I've kind of pumped up that feel of the room. If I turn that off again. Just a little bit still too dead for me. Turn that back on. And it's a crazy um, kind of difference in feel. It's amazing how much that feels more like playing through an amp in the room. It really does give you the effect of kind of sitting next to an amplifier, even though you're hearing this through studio monitors. Um, again, you hopefully can hear that, especially if you use headphones, you'll be able to hear that, or good studio monitors. Um, and then I've added in a stereo tape delay, and this is kind of like the icing on the cake for all of these tones. Now, the reason I've used a stereo delay is because I wanted to do the Andy Timmons thing of having basically the left and right delays being offset by 75%, um, which basically gives you this, this kind of stereo panning effect of slightly offset delays. <laughs> but they're offset in a very kind of musical uh, way. The subdivision between them is very, very musical. So there's this kind of beautiful dancing effect, but it doesn't mean you have to play at a specific tempo. It's just a beautiful sound that you get. And that's it. That's basically how that preset is constructed. And then you've got, as I say, the stereo chorus and the plex reverb as well. Uh, depending on which scene you're going to go for. And as I say, there's eight different scenes. For the drive, um, all I've done, if I go to the drive kind of setting here, which is number three, I think. Uh, for the lead time with the drive, basically it's a tube, modded tube screamer, so we keep the low end. The drive is set to zero, the tone just over halfway, and we've got the level quite low because it kicks out a lot of level, this, this um, particular drive pedal. So if I turn it off, we get this. Still a shed load of gain. Turn it on. But still super dynamic. Absolutely amazing. On the clean tones, the drive is slightly different. So I'm utilizing the channels here. So I've used the second drive channel. We've got a standard tube screamer. The drive is set quite high. The tone is backed off. And the amp, uh, what I've done is for this particular setting on the amp, I've got the bright switch still on, but I've changed the EQ setting. So I added more bass in, in this case. <laughs> So here's our standard clean tone, uh, again with the bright switch off, but you'll see that the bass is quite low. Then with the drive on, you'll see the EQ settings change on the amp. 
Not a lot of gain. And that's it. So that preset is available on my website right now. If you click the link below, you can actually download the preset from my website. Hope you guys enjoy it. I'm afraid it is only Axe FX3 compatible at this point, but you don't need any uh, kind of extra cabs or anything. It's all stock stuff that goes in there. Let me know what you think, guys. Let me know how it works with your guitars in the comments below and what you thought of this video. If you've got any more kind of requests for these kind of videos um, or anything else you'd like to see on the channel, obviously let me know two in the comment section below. Um, quick note, t-shirts and lessons are available from my site. So if you want to learn how to do any of the stuff I've been doing, any of the legato stuff, any of the kind of chordal stuff I've been doing, there's all sorts of lessons available on my site that will teach you how to do that. Just again, click the link below and you'll also find Tonquil t-shirts on there available now. We ship all over the world, very reasonable shipping rates available for anybody who wants to check out the t-shirts. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Make sure you click the like and subscribe buttons if you uh, enjoyed the video. And of course, hit that bell notification icon to make sure you never miss any more content of mine ever again. All right, guys, my name is Tom Quayle. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.